Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Story double one. Humans are weird. Restuff. So far, there has been no sign of hormonal shifts. Seventeen's sister was saying in the display screen. Her antennae twitched as she heard the rumbling of the heavy hall coming in. She rippled a frill in a request for silent patience as she considered it would be the matted pair of physicists returning from the personal errand that they had requested the wheel of heavy vehicle for. It felt wrong, almost deceitful, but the pair were known to be very strict about such things. She quickly adjusted the screen, setting to the range a human couldn't see, and deliberately let her voice slip into the high range of soothing clicks of a mother language. Why are we conversing like this? Third mother asked, tilting her broad triangular head to the side, revealing a flaking age behind her eyes. There are humans coming in from outside, Seventeen's sister replied, and we do not wish them to know about your suspected hormonal condition. Third mother said, her worn mandible clicking tightly in disappointment. Seventeen's sister braced her own mandibles to resist snapping at her first mother's third sister. The situation, like most involving humans, was complex. I don't mind them hearing, she explained patiently. I've actually spoken of this with the first physicist before, but humans have a rather strict rules about overhearing personal medical information. If I do not give them explicit permission to participate in the conversation, they will inconvenience themselves to preposterous extents to avoid overhearing what we are discussing. Why do you not explicitly invite them then? Mother asked. You know how the sexual dynamic is so, uh, different with them? Seventeen sister asked. They are a balanced species, the mother acknowledged with a dip of her head. It's more than that, Seventeen sister explained. Flicking her frill in confusion, there is a completely different set of rules for what biomedical data you can discuss with females and the males. It would be different if they were biologists, but as they are theoretical mathematicians, they don't have any training to overcome their biological anti-parasite coding. Third mother stared at her tilting head and slowly from side to side as she tried to get her antennas into that. What? she finally asked. Does their branch of science have to do with the anti-code training that they receive? I don't know, Seventeen sister clicked in a hollow tone. But, as I was saying, I think we have to face the reality that I am probably a sterile- There is no proof yet. Third mother interrupted. My own Seventeen sister has two buds. A statistical anomaly, Seventeen sister said with a dismissive wave. We both know that past the twelfth there is no guarantee that any sisters will reach hormonal maturity. I think, ugh. Seventeen sister, how long are you going to be on the space phone? Came a loud voice. Seventeen sister curled her antenna in annoyance and rippled her frilled in apology to third mother. Third mother gave a chitter of amusement in reply. She had heard the stories of humans after all. I will be on some time, Seventeen sister replied tilting her head to direct one faceted eye towards the male half of the pair of physicists. We are discussing my reproductive capacity. She indicated for third mother to watch his reaction, and the human did not disappoint. He started a bit and probably would have slunk out the room if he had not been clearly uplifted by some triumphant joy. What is he so pleased about? Third mother asked. Would it be rude to ask him to share his joy? Not in the least... Seventeen's sister replied, before lowering the tone of her voice back into the human auditory range. Was your, um, you called it Viking Raid successful, second physicist? She asked. Aye, it was, he said, the discomfort fleeing from his face. We were able to get there before the center biomashers and pulled out a ton of free lumber. More than enough to finish the project for the little woman. What will you do with the excess? Seventeen's sister asked. Oh, uh, the human waved a hand dismissively. Build a wee shed and store it till we need it for something or the other. 
The female human burst into the room and flashed her bony mandible protuberances at Seventeen's sister. Aye, and you'll be off the phone in a bit, she asked. Not for some time, Seventeen's sister replied. Well, uh, we can wait, the male human said with a nod. It's not time-sensitive after all, and we need to unload the wood. Who are you going to communicate with? Seventeen sister asked, seeing Third Munda's curiosity and the colors of her frill. My da, the human female replied. Just want to tell him about our hole out there. Did your ancestors proudly catch wind of the decommissioned private base? The male confirmed. Da will be breezed as punch. Let's get the free wood unloaded. The female instructed, and the two humans were about to leave. A moment, Seven Sister interjected. Yeah. The humans turned to look at her in curiosity. You did not call your first father when your last theory was confirmed by the team of the gathering in the next system. Seventeen Sister observed. Space calls are expensive, one human said with a shrug. We just told them in the scheduled one a few days later. You did not call them when your experiment was approved by the Central University. Seventeen Sister observed again. Expensive, the male repeated with a shrug. If I understand the situation, Seventeen Sister said slowly, you valued the processed tree fibers because you were able to get them for free. Now you want to spend a significant amount to call your first fathers to boost your free will. Now you want to spend a significant amount to call your first father to boast about the free wood. That's the idea, the female human replied with a grin. You did your ancestors proud, the male said with a grin, reaching out and dropping an arm around the mate's shoulders. Da needs to know about this. Let us know when your space boat's free, Seventeen. The two walked out, still linking at the shoulders, and Third Mother clicked and hissed in approval at the adorable behavior of the pair. But despite her obvious amusement, there was still a perplexed set on her antenna. How can two mathematicians be so uh, inefficient? She asked. I don't know, Third Mother, Seventeen Sister replied. I just don't know. Men of Story Story Dabber 2 All Systems Science University Internship Rules Written by Apophis Pegasus Transcript from Galactico PA System Greetings to my fellow workers. We at the Galactico Incorporated are proud to announce that the first ever influx of human interns from the All Systems Science University. As you know, final year students from ASS-U, Karnak, I can hear you giggling all the way over in sales. You do this every year. Come here to gain valuable work experience for five sub-cycles. Let us welcome them with open appendages and even more open nutrient transport fluid circulation mechanisms. To that end, the university has provided us with a list of rules, regulations, and suggestions that they believe will ensure their smooth integration into the company. They must be really keen to get them integrated. The headmaster literally begged me to read them, even apologized, though I told him it was no trouble. Let us begin. 1. We strongly suggest that no human work in the laboratories. Hmm, that seems to be a bit specious. And impossible. All the humans volunteered to do at least a cycle in the R&D department. Weird, especially for a science university. Anywho. 2. The human recreational drug imbibing apparatus, known as cigarettes, are not to be imbibed by any non-human member. Well, that seems ominous, but I suppose it's toxic or something. 3. The third cycle of the human's internship coincides with the festival known as uh, Halloween. Yuri, this time, we strongly recommend Galactico Mortuary and Body Disposal Services incinerate all of their dead. Well, that's a bit odd. I suppose it's a religious aversion to body sting, like the Seert. Uh, next up, number 4. Don't let them on the premises grounds with anything that looks like a hammer, especially during hurricane season. As if we'd still use manual hammers in this day and age. Number five. Human physiology combined with the numerous personal enhancements of the students makes them excellent security. 
However, be warned that they take a very, uh, proactive view on the term uh, security. And I'm sure the boys and girls near the Exian space will be very pleased to hear that. No, haven't heard a peep out of them recently. A caffeinated and motivated human is a productive human. Good to know. A bored human is a dangerous human. I suppose they can get a little cranky with repetitive tasks, sir. Uh, we've all been there, right? Number eight. We don't mean cranky. Trust us. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Number nine. We suggest you don't work with Parisians. My, my. Hope there isn't any bad blood between those two species. Maybe we can help foster some new bonds between those two species. Start some friendships. What do you say, guys? And finally, number ten. Many of the humans are going through what is known as GOT Season 8 Rewatch. Beware of dragons. Well, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, GOT Season 8 Rewatch? What is that? Some kind of recurring allergy? Don't know. And what the blubfuck is a dragon? End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.